the great Indian bustard. Mostly found in the Indian subcontinent, the great Indian bustard lives in wide open landscapes with sparse grasses and shrubs. It spends most of its time on the ground searching for food. This bird feeds on grass seeds, groundnuts and millets as well as insects, rodents and lizards. At 15 kilograms, it is the heaviest flying bird in India. The great Indian bustard does not build a nest. The female chooses a secluded place to lay her egg. She incubates the egg for 25 days before the chick is hatched. The male does not play any role in making the nest, incubation or the raising of the chick. With only 150 birds left in India, it is difficult to spot the great Indian bustard. It can be found in Rajasthan and Gujarat, with a few in Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. They have disappeared completely from the states of Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Orissa and Tamil Nadu. Poaching poses a grave threat to the great Indian bustard. Moreover, a sharp decline in their natural habitat due to agricultural expansion and increase in mechanized farming has further endangered their numbers. The state bird of Rajasthan is a fascinating bird and it is in great danger. Remember, the future and safety of wildlife and the environment lies in the hands of young people like you. Spread the message of conservation of species and their habitats. Granny, you told me that you will teach me tenses for my exam. When will you teach me? I can teach you any time. Stop playing and come and sit beside me. Who is this? This is Wolverine. He's one of the X-Men guys. Oh, and how do you know about them? Deepak told me about them. Yesterday, when he watched TV, I asked him if I could play with these. He said I can take them. Okay, pause. You said you asked him yesterday when he watched TV, right? Yes. Why? Is that wrong English? Shall we learn about the past tense? Then you will see. Yes. Tell me, Granny. There are four forms of the past tense. Yes, I know. Simple past, past continuous, past perfect, past perfect continuous. Very good. But do you know the difference between them and how to use them correctly? Well, no. You said you will teach me. See, to understand the different forms of the past tense, we first need to understand an interesting thing. Past tense tells us about an action that has taken place in the past, right? Yes. The simple past tense is what we use commonly. We use it to talk about a completed action. What do I mean by a completed action? An action that was completed before you started talking about it. Can you give me an example? Sure. For example, Deepak watched TV. By that, I mean that Deepak has finished watching TV already. Then why did you say I was wrong? I'm coming to that. First, let's look at a few more examples for simple past tense. She wrote a letter to her father. Ravi left for Bangalore yesterday. I saw the Taj Mahal when I went to Agra. In all these sentences, the action has already been completed at the time of our speaking. I did my homework. Correct. Now, what did you say about yesterday? You said, yesterday, when he watched TV, I asked him if I could play with these. You see, there are two actions taking place in this sentence. One, where Deepak is watching TV. And the second, where you are asking him something. Correct? Yes. Deepak was still continuing to watch TV when you asked him the question, right? He didn't complete watching TV. The action was not completed. Yes. Therefore, you should have said, yesterday, when he was watching TV, I asked him if I could play with these. 
The past continuous tense is used to show an action that was going on or was being done continuously at some time in the past. We use were and was with the ing form of the verbs to indicate the past continuous tense. Okay, can you give me some more examples? Okay, the boys were playing football in the garden when I called them. It was raining when we went out. The baby was crying when I went to him. In these sentences, the actions were still going on in the past. They were not completed. I understand. I was playing with my Wolverine when I asked you to teach me tenses. Very good. Now, the third form is past perfect tense. It is used to indicate an action that was completed at some point in the past before some other action started. We use had with the simple past tense form of the verbs to indicate the past perfect tense. For example, the match had started when I reached the stadium. The train had left the station when we reached there. You see, the first action was already completed before the second action took place. Um, for example, I had finished my homework before Daddy came home. Absolutely right. Yay! This is easy once you understand the rules. Yes, it is easy. Now, let's look at the last form. Past perfect continuous tense. The past perfect continuous tense is used to describe an action which started in the past and continued till a later point of time in the past. But isn't that the same as past continuous tense? Well, both the past continuous tense and the past perfect continuous tense are used to talk about an action that took place in the past and were continuing to take place in the past. However, the past perfect continuous tense indicates a much longer duration than the past continuous tense. We use had been with the ing forms of the verbs to indicate past perfect continuous tense. For example, she had been living in Pune for three years before she was transferred. The first action continued to take place for a very long time before the second action took place. Okay, a little complicated, but I think I understand. Oh, it isn't complicated. Here is another example. Deepak had been watching TV for two hours until his mother told him to study. Is this correct, Granny? I had been writing for 10 minutes when the light went off. Absolutely. You have understood all the forms of past tense very well. Yay! Thank you, Granny. You made them very clear. Of course. You can ask me any time. Just remember, we must always speak right. Wake up, young lady. You've been sleeping too long now. You'll get late for school. Granny, it's raining. It's raining since yesterday. How can I go to school? It's that so? Yes, Granny. Every time it is raining, the streets are flooding. I can see that. But what about your classes? You have your examinations in less than a month's time. Won't you miss important lessons? Oh, Granny, I'm going to school every day. Please let me stay home today. Young lady, your sense of tense seems to have gone for a toss. Haven't you been paying attention in class? Why? I have. What is wrong with my tenses? You are mixing up the different forms of the present tense. Do you know what the present tense is? Of course, Granny. The present tense expresses an action that is currently taking place or is going on. Yes, you are correct. And do you know the different forms of the present tense? Um, I remember our teacher doing this in class. There is the present tense, the present continuous tense... The present perfect tense and the present perfect continuous tense. Why do you sound so uncertain? You are absolutely correct. Oh! It's raining so heavily. Mm, you use the wrong tense right now, young lady. Why? You said, it rains 
so heavily. We use the simple present tense for those actions which are always and absolutely true. The earth revolves around the sun. The sun shines in the sky. It rains heavily in Kerala during monsoons. Deepak plays cricket on Sundays. Sonam paints beautifully. These are absolute facts, correct? Yes. We use the simple present tense for such absolute truths. Okay. However, the rain outside is happening right now. It is continuing to rain. It may stop soon. It is not an absolute truth. For such actions, we use the present continuous tense. It shows us that an action is going on at the time of speaking. We use the verbs is and are with the ing forms of the verbs to indicate the present continuous tense. Oh, so I should have said it is raining so heavily. That right. You also made a few other mistakes earlier. You said, every time it is raining, the streets are flooding. You see, you are stating a truth here. So you must use the simple present tense. Every time it rains, the streets flood. I also said, I am going to school every day. That is wrong too, right? I should have said, I go to school every day. But someone is sitting at home today, isn't she? Well, Grandma, it is raining. Okay, okay. Now, tell me about the other two forms of present tense. Hmm, the present perfect tense. This tells us about an action that has just completed or finished at the time of speaking. It is not quite in the past. It is in the present moment, but is over. We use the helping verbs has and have with the simple past tense of the verb to indicate present perfect tense. Example. Looks like it has stopped raining. Similarly, I have finished my breakfast of toast and eggs. I have made my bed and cleaned my study table. Deepak has gone to school. All these actions have been completed just before the time of our speaking about them. I understand. Now, the last form of the present tense is the present perfect continuous. This indicates an action which started in the past, has gone on till the present and will continue in the future. We use have been and has been with the ing forms of the verbs to indicate this tense. For example, your mother has been working in the kitchen for two hours. Your father has been fixing the leak in the bathroom sink since morning. It has been raining all night. And I have been sleeping all morning. You are correct. And now you must get out of bed and have your breakfast. It seems so simple when you explain grammar to me, Granny. It is simple. You will get better with practice. And I will be able to speak right too. That's correct. Now off you go.